Hello, friends. This is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com, here with Dave's Faves. And today I have this marvelous disc from Takata Classics. It's music for Alfred Hitchcock. Film music. Oh, it's marvelous. Just marvelous. It, I mean, Hitchcock just always got the best composers, and they did some of their best work for him. It's amazing. And, and this is a wonderful collection of all kinds of stuff by all kinds of different composers performed by John Mocheri, who's a film music expert. I mean, he's one of the, the, the great film music guys in the world of conducting today. Remember, he did all that corn gold stuff and he ran around doing doing, you know, symphony concerts where he synchronized you know, the film score to the actual scenes from the movie. I saw a couple of those concerts. They were just marvelous. And here we have, I mean, what a great collection of stuff. Oh, my word. It's with the Danish National Symphony Orchestra. Um, and some of it is live and some of it is not. And the sonics are a little bit, are a little, a little bit uh, variable from selection to selection, but they're still perfectly good. And here's what we get. First, Bernard Hermann. We get Psycho, we get Vertigo, we get The Man Who Knew Too Much, and we get, of course, North by Northwest, the main title. Oh, it's fantastic. So we've got the Bernard Herrmann stuff. Then we have Franz Waxman, who was equally fabulous. He was a wonderful composer. His big, his big ones were Taurus Bulba. Remember Taurus Bulba? It's really, really cool. The Ride to Dubno is phenomenal. And the, the Bride of Frankenstein is incredible. And his two Hitchcock spectaculars were Rebecca and Rear Window, which are fabulous. So this isn't all that they did for Hitchcock, but it's a selection. It's a very nice one. Then Dimitri Tiomkin famous for doing like westerns and things and other stuff like that. He was a big, big hearted, ample, splashy kind of composer. His music is wonderful. Strangers on a Train and Dial M for Murder. And then we have Arthur Benjamin, the man who knew too much. And finally, Danny Elfman. Danny Elfman did a little, little piece called Hitchcock, which is music from the end credits of Hitchcock. He, he, a film about Hitchcock himself with music by Elfman, who was very, very heavily influenced by all of these composers, especially Bernard Herrmann. But then again, everybody was very, very heavily influenced by Bernard Herrmann, weren't they? And so I, you know, I, I adore these film music collections. I, I really do. Um, it, I know that sometimes, you know, you get little sniglets of things and they're kind of short and and maybe insubstantial, but the fact of the matter is they're no more insubstantial than a lot of the stuff that passed for incidental music in the 19th century. And the fact of the matter is film music is the theater music. I mean, you know, back in, before we had recordings, theaters had orchestras, full-time freestanding orchestras. I mean, you know, Eugene Ormandy got his start in the U.S. as the conductor, first concertmaster, then conductor of a theater orchestra. The Capitol Theater Orchestra is a movie house orchestra, I believe. I mean, that's where he got his start. And that's one of the reasons he was so, you know, derided as a serious conductor because of where he came from. The snobbery about this is demented because some of the greatest pieces of music ever are were written for the theater. I mean, Nielsen's Aladdin, Grieg's Pierkin, Sibelius's The Tempest, and so, you know, and on and on it goes. These were all pieces written for the theater. And movie music is no different. It's no different at all. It just usually is, has bigger orchestras and splashier effects and whatever. It's exactly the same thing. So we have absolutely no business turning up our noses at it. And we should be celebrating fabulous collections like this, especially when they when they acknowledge the work of a, a, a master filmmaker maker like Hitchcock and genius composers. All of these guys were first class composers, first, and film music guys afterwards. They really knew what they were doing. They knew how to capture a scene, an atmosphere, how to write a great tune on a dime. Yeah, 
it's a it's a limited medium in some ways. But you know, so is so is a Chopin waltz. So is anything. It's, it's it, music is full of limitations. The issue is not whether they're limitations. The issue is whether they serve as a spur to heightened inspiration, or whether they're just work a day. Well. Hitchcock spurred all of his composers to heightened inspiration. And so you should definitely give a shot and listen to this with John Mocheri and the Danish National Radio Symphony Orchestra. Music by Hermann, Waxman, Tjomkin, Benjamin, Elfman on Toccata Classics. Fabulous stuff. So keep on listening, friends. Thanks for joining me. Take care. <laughs>